You know, at heart, we are all one. And, and I think that that's really the key. Uh, and the way to get there for me, and you can get there any way that you need to, uh, but the way I get there is from Darwin. Because I just read again, uh, for the first time since I was in high school last week, Darwin's Origin of the Species. And in the third to last page, uh, Darwin says, you know what? If my theory is correct, uh, then I have no choice but to argue that every living thing is ultimately descended from the first form of life. We are all one. That's not a metaphor. That's literal truth for Darwin. And then Darwin goes on to say, I'm not demoralized by the fact that I'm the product of billions of years of evolution and are descended from a thing that crawled out of the slime. I'm ennobled by that prospect. I also think it's important to recognize that every human being is directly descended from a really tiny ancestral population. Who's heard the term evolutionary bottleneck? Anybody ever hear that term? Turns out that every human on the planet comes from a really tiny population. There are only about 200 original humans, and every one of us is descended from those 200 humans. Once again, we are all from the same family. It turns out that every human on the planet is incredibly related from a genetic point of view. In fact, every human on Earth is more related to each other than any two chimps sitting next to each other on a hill in Africa. So when we talk about ourselves as human beings, we tend to think about how am I different from that person in China? How am I different from the dude in the turban uh, that's uh, in Malaysia? Well, the fact is, is you're not much different. You are much more alike. We are much more related than we are different. And the quicker we begin to recognize that, I think the better off that we'll be. All right, well, let me leave you with a couple of thoughts, because I agree with what Herb said, that anxiety's not going to go away, uh, and death's not going to go away. Uh, and the question becomes, uh, how do we get to come to terms with that? Herb, I've been worried about death since I was eight years old, as far as I can remember, and this is something that uh, has always troubled me. Uh, just like Sam Keen says in the movie, this is unacceptable. I didn't sign on for that, uh, and uh, there's no way that uh, I'm going to, uh, just, it's just wrong. Um, but a couple of things that I've always found comforting. Uh, one is from uh, this ancient Roman philosopher, Seneca. You ever do any of his stuff? I like him a lot. In an essay about death, uh, Seneca says, oh, a lot of people ask me, how will the world be after I'm gone? To which Seneca replies, it'll be just like it was before you were here. I like that. <laughs> I don't know if that comforts you, but I, I, I just thought that was cool. How, how will the world be when I'm gone? Just like it was before you were here. J just as it should be. I also like this idea uh, that uh, whatever we need to do um, uh, with regard to advancing the long-term interests of our species, uh, we will take intestinal fortitude. I, I like all of the thinkers who talk about uh, the need for us to be courageous. Uh, and some of you have heard me say this before, but I, I really like when Eric Erickson, at the end of his Eight Stages of Man, says when parents have the courage to die, their children will have the faith to live. And I, I like that. And, and, and then finally, and I promise I'll shut up in 30 seconds, a lot of people, I, I go around and I talk about these things, and I hear other people talk about these things, and, and folks will say, hey, it's just impossible. People are people. We're never going to change, and, and that's all there is to it. Uh, to which I will reply two things. One is, is that's factually incorrect. If we take an evolutionary point of view seriously, not only can we change, we will change or we will die. And, and then secondly, and I'll just leave you with one of my favorite uh, passages from Albert Camus, the last sentence of the plague uh, is one of my favorite lines, and I, I've uh, spit it out here several times before, but I'll do it again. I, in that book, uh, Camus says, in times of pestilence, we learn that there is more to admire in mankind than to despise. And I think that's just a nice way to finish. These are difficult times, 
and we see plenty of despicable behavior, but we see plenty of admirable behavior too. And especially if we're willing to look for it, uh, I think it's there. And so thank you very much for your uh, kind attention.